So the last episodes end when I remove old HAL sensor. It wasn't very easy because someone decided to glue it to the shell, which was a bad idea. But I've been able to do it. I had to use couple tools and I have to admit that this Hilda grinding tool with built-in battery is quite useful because it's kind of delicate so you are not worried that you will damage some kind of delicate socket which is over here and also less cable junket because built-in battery. So when I remove old hull sensor I tried to place this new one and I face it holy shit again a problem because this thing was a little bit too big for the socket so I had to grind it a little bit as you can see now on the video. But yeah, again, Hilda helps me and I've been able at least to place it inside. Well, it looks like shit to be honest, but I did it in purpose. Because I want to show you PVB60, general purpose paint for PCBs. This thing is crazy useful. It can insulate some electronic parts like those wires. When you paint those wires, then there will be small chance or no chance to get some short circuit also. This thing will make your electronic more or less waterproof, which is quite important for this LCD screen with the trigger, which is outside the scooter. When it's raining and if some water will go inside, then you can have some short circuit. But when you paint your PCB by using this stuff, then there will be no chance or small chance that you will get some sh short circuit. So this thing is crazy useful. Also, it's working like some kind of glue, but before we will use this thing at first, let's check if this HAL sensor is working. Once again, let's set multimeter to DC voltage. Let's connect black probe from multimeter to black wire on HAL and red probe to blue wire because last time a HAL sensor, so this one with blue wire, wasn't working. And we've got again 3.2 volts, but will it work? So here is my magic magnet. And moment of truth, we've got 3.2, holy shit, 0 volts, 3.2, and 0 volts, yep, it's working, so it looks like it's done. Now we know that HAL sensor is working, so we can use PVB60, yeah, it smells like nail polish. And as you can see, we've got this funny thing, and just do it like this. And this is all, trust me, this is all super crazy easy to use. And also it's working like some kind of glue, so don't use it too much. And actually it's more or less done. So yeah, that's why I'm saying that this PVB60 is super important. And I will show you in a second that now those wires are insulated and there is no way to get some short circuit on those. Now let's set multimeter to thing which I call it beep mode. So when there will be some short circuit, then it will beep. I still got connected through red probe and red cable is over here. So when I touch it, it should beep because we've got short circuit. On other ones, it will not beep because there is no short circuit just on this red one. And this red one is going over here. And now when I touch this wire, so this one from the left, I have to focus somehow. Of course, I don't recommend to use this PB as an insulator. I think better choice will be to use some shrink tubes as you can see over here, but I just did it to show you. And of course, I recommend to use couple layers, like maybe five or 10. And there we are, one day later. I finished the motor, it looks the same, but this time it's working. So when I add the throttle, <laughs> yeah, it's working. Of course, I am with admin with my best Eastcoot friend with TechLife X7, so it's like 010X. And we'll push today, Boyeda, maybe not to the limit because last time it ends not very well, but we'll do some fun. And actually, as you can see, I still got my oil fork on the back, and this thing is mint. Thanks to this simple shock fork, this could behave much more stable. Actually, I set rebound adjustment to around 70%, so the fork is going back quite slow. But yeah, thanks to it, this could now is super stable. So let's go, bro. Shit, boy, that is quite crazy. 
Whoa, lots of things on the road. Half throttle. Jesus Christ. Now we have to be careful. Someone can be over here and it's quite tight. Okay, no one here. So now let's hit almost full throttle. Shit. This thing is beastie. Deep sand. Also, whoa, rough road. As you can hear, front shock <laughs> is making this metallic noise because it has not rebound adjustment, but it feels super rigid compared to whoa, loud ES18 or T85. Yeah, this thing is super rigid. But yeah, it's making this cracking noise. But I don't care much. Yeah, boy, you guys, fast, bro. Check how fast I'm going on this <laughs> tight truck. Okay, here is some obstacle at the middle. Whoa, we've got fallen tree. And I've got idea how to go through this fallen tree. You have to do something like single door drive and at full throttle your scoot will jump on this tree and then you can slide over this tree. So yeah. Another tree. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, almost full, full throttle now. Okay, we are like this, and now we can <laughs> slide over the street. This is the best idea ever. <laughs> Look at this, easy man. <laughs> nice. Ah, it's heavy. Yep. There you go. Now we can go. Let's back to dual drive, and whoa, full throttle. Jesus Christ. Well, next fall in three, but this time it's double, so we have to avoid this one. Oh, some big hole! <laughs> yeah, this is this is pure fun, bro. Jesus, this is some whoa! <laughs> rough, rough road and really. Yeah. Boyeda is a little bit crazy sometimes. <laughs> Oh, come on! Oh. <laughs> Sorry, bro! <Okay. laughs> Shit! <laughs> that, that will be difficult! Is it yeah, easy for him because his scoot is much lighter? Maybe not that easy! <laughs> ah, easy! There will be next fallen tree, bro! Careful! Soon! Whoa, here is tight, lots of rocks, big roots. But yeah, full throttle. Whoa, that was stupid. Let's try to slide over this tree. Whoa, bleh. Bleh. I did it. <laughs> I did it. Come on, bro. Nice. Nice, nice. We can go forward and then first right is nice up here, it's a little bit sloppy. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Little bit. Actually at the end it's quite difficult. Now let's go right. Whoa, super deep sound, shit, shit, shit. And yeah, this is tricky up here because We've got some big roots and of course I will go over these big roots the hardest way. Hard throttle now. Hard throttle. Easy, we are still going. Still half throttle. Yeah, and it's like the wheel won't stop, so nice. So looks like my fix is still working. Rear fork make this scooter so freaking stable, too, so I'm going quiet fast. The front fork is super stiff, super rigid, so compared to Yano Bike T85 or Lao TS18, you can feel a little bit more confident, actually, much more confident, because you don't feel that the front part of the scooter is like, you know, bands, it's like flexible. Over here is super rigid, super stiff, that's why Boyeda is quite a good speeder, off-road speeder, so if you'd like to use off-road scooter only for speed and power then boy that is good choice otherwise Lauti ES18 is like multi-purpose beast 
because it's for the off-road, on-road and it's incredibly comfy because of the suspension.